Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, Father God, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask as we read this word today, or if we're reading it or hearing it, Father God, bless us. Help us apply it to our lives, Father God. Father God, we welcome the Holy Spirit onto this podcast. We ask him to give us wisdom and knowledge, excuse me, of this word help us to understand what he's trying to convey to us and father god bless the ones that are hearing it bless the ones that are reading in jesus mighty name amen so today's key verse is joel 2 and 12 this is why the lord says turn to me now while there is time give me your hearts come with fasting weeping and moaning subject turning to god now christian truths i'm gonna say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like i'm turning back I'm focused. I'm letting go. I am free. The Holy Spirit is asking us to turn back to him. A lot of us have fallen short and we haven't taken the time to get back. And sometimes some of us are trying. Each day is an uphill battle to stay where we need to be because it's so much in the world that can pull us from where we need to be. Some of us fall into the temptation of the endless loop of never getting back there because of a sin we can't shake loose from. But we must try. I I have been in a place in my life where it seems that the more I try, the same problem keeps coming. So what do we do when this happens? How do we stop the situation or temptation from conquering us? We must humble ourselves. In the book of James chapter 4, verse 7, it says this. So humble yourself before God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. We must humble ourselves before God about our troubles and woes. God can't fix anything if we keep saying it's okay or that it's small or that it won't hurt anything. No, our sins won't hurt anything, but it's hurting someone, which is our relationship with God. So we must become humble and ask for his help. And the verse tells us we have one more thing we must do, which some might find hard to do over humbling themselves, which is resist. What? We must resist the devil and he has to flee. This is the first step step in turning back to God. The second step is verse eight. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. It says here, come closer to God and he will come closer to you. Cleanse you of your sins and purify your heart because when we choose to sin for the comforts of life, we need our hearts purified from all the things of this world. It's easy to say, I choose God, but when we allow him to cleanse us and make us whiter than snow, we are telling him, I need you. That's what we need. We need our lives to be cleansed by him, because if we don't, we are just going to keep going back to our reoccurring sin. We're just going to keep going back to what we think makes us feel good. Yes, sure. Those those sins makes us feel really good. But what those sins are doing is killing our relationship with God. That's why the Holy Spirit is saying, come back to me. Is you lo- are you loyal? Or is your loyalty divided? If it feels like it is, ask the Holy Spirit now to help you choose him. To turn around because living this life every day in our way and only doing what we see fit won't get us closer to God. It will only pull us further. We have to get back to making God our first love. Verse 9, let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. It tells us here that we have to be full of grief and resentment for what we have done. We have to have a contrite heart. If we aren't at least sorry or regretful for what we have been doing, ignoring him, placing him second, maybe even third, our life, this kind of heart won't do it again this kind of heart will refuse to do anything to break their relationship with God. A contrite heart, a heart in the in the right position, people can apologize all day. But if they don't mean it, it doesn't mean a thing. But when we fully go to God with hurt and shame in our hearts, asking him to help us turn around, he will. But will you be willing to turn around? Will you be willing to step away from everything and focus on him today? Do you hear the Holy Spirit calling out to you? Do you hear him saying, choose me? If you do, turn around and let go of what the enemy wants you to do and hold on to what God has in store for you. 
We can't go deeper in God if we are still bound by our own sins. We can't be free from the repeated, repeated sins if we don't have a contrite heart. What happens is we allow Satan to make us feel that sin will make us feel better. And that's it. What we need, and honestly, it's not what we need. And what it won't make us feel any better. The thing with sin is isn't a build. It isn't built to last. It's built to keep us coming day after day. But when we give our give our everything to God, we learn that he can feel every desire, take away every pain and give us peace on every level. Turn back to God today. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. We ask you that you get forgive us, uh, forgive us of our sins. We ask you to give us peace. We ask you that you help us to focus on you and not to lean on sin. Father, renew our mind, touch our heart and change us. Lord, every day we don't know what to do, but we ask that you keep us going, keep us through through our day to day struggles. Father, help us to look past our sins and not focus on who we used to be, but help us to be conquerors. Help us to stand against, strong against the enemy. Give us strength to pray and meditate on you every day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So today's topic is turning to God now. A lot of us have gotten to the place where we're comfortable with our sin. We want God, but we want our sin. And honestly, we can't have both. When I first gave my life to God, I, I, I thought that the one struggle that I was going to have was going to be, that's going to be that one struggle. And it wasn't the one struggle that I had when I gave my life to God was my temper. I, I still work on it. And it's still something he helps me with. But the thing is, is that every day I ask God to help me with that. And, and when I lose my temper, I don't cuss. I don't fuss. I just withdraw. I get very quiet. And most people get nervous when I get quiet because I'm mad. And no, it's not a good thing. It's not the, the biggest sin, nor is the smallest sin. And sin is sin. It, it doesn't matter if it's just an anger. It doesn't matter if you're looking at corn. It doesn't matter if you're drinking. It doesn't matter if you're smoking to get high. It's still sin. Can't get angry. But you can ain't get angry, but sin not. And the point is, is that it's sin. Yes, we're going to sin because our flesh is weak. We're going to sin because we're in the flesh. But the thing is that every day we must give it to God and we must learn how to listen to him. Teach us how to not fall into sin. That, that's the thing. We have to learn how to not do it. And the only way to do it is to humble ourselves. It's steps that we're giving in this devotional. And the first step was humble ourselves. And a lot of times we don't want to humble ourselves. We want to do what we want to do. We want to say what we want to say. And we want to live our life. That's the pride of life. That's one of the sins is pride of life. It's being so prideful on how we think our life should go that we're going to live it the way we want and not listen to the will of God. But you cannot be a child of God and go your own way. You cannot be a child of God and decide to walk in darkness and walk in the light. It doesn't go. Those two cannot go. They can't. So you have to pick. Are you going to constantly walk in darkness? Or are you going to walk in the light? We have to choose. Every day is a choice. Every day we have to pick what we're going to do. Are we going to serve God or man? It's easy to make friends. It's easy to have the world behind you while you're walking around. And you think you got the world on a string. Because you got all these friends. And you got all these things. And you do all these things with your friends. But what happens when you don't have those things? What happens when you get older and you realize that this is just money? I realized that as I got older, as money is just money. It, it can buy me a bunch of stuff. It can buy me the nicest things I have. But what about my soul? If I died right then and there, before I gave my life to Christ, I knew exactly where I'd be going. I'd be going to hell because I didn't serve him. I didn't care to. I didn't care when someone talked to me about it. I didn't, I didn't care to, to go to church. I didn't care at all. No, I didn't hate him. I just didn't care to play in the light and play in the darkness. I wanted to play in the darkness. And I didn't want him bother me about what I was doing. 
but because I had a praying mother. I had a praying family. They didn't allow me to stay in that in peace. And at the time, I felt like they was bothering me. At the time, I felt like they was just being a nuisance, to be honest. But when I gave my life to Christ, I realized they was trying to save my soul. Yes, sin feels really, really good. The different sins that we can commit, it can make us feel good. It can make us feel like we're on top of the world. We can feel like we have everything because of this particular sin. But what you're not realizing with this particular sin, you're killing your relationship with Christ. No, we are children of God. We're no longer sinners. We sin, but we're no longer sinners. But what makes us sinners is when we keep going and going and going and dabbling and dabbling and dabbling and dabbling and dabbling into the flesh. And that's what the devil wants. He wants us where we decide not to humble ourselves. Like in James 4 and 7 says, resist the devil, he will flee from you. We must humble ourselves before the God, before God, and resist the devil, he will flee. As long as we're resisting, he has to go. But the moment we say, ah, oh, it won't hurt. Oh, let's just do it this one time. Oh. I have grace. It's okay. As long as we keep saying that to ourselves, the more the enemy is going to come. And a lot of times we fall into these repeated sins because we allow ourselves to let go. We allow ourselves to, to dabble. And we allow ourselves to keep thinking and thinking and thinking days before we do it. We keep thinking, maybe, just maybe, I just do this this one time. It, 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 I don't have to do this all the time. Oh, no one won't know. It's just me. Just me in my room. Or no, it's just me and this somebody. No one won't see us. But let me tell you something. God does. We have to stop thinking that it's okay to dabble. Because the moment we do, we lose our strength in God. We lose the willpower to pray. We lose the willpower to 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 say no to sin and we start saying yes to sin and we start saying no to prayer because oh i, I just i just missed prayer this one time it's fine oh i miss prayer again it's it's fine it's fine I, I, jesus uh thank you for today bless you bless me keep me thank you god bless the food god bless the cook quick prayers but what starts to happen is because we're not praying we're not putting the sword of the spirit on. We're not putting the feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. We're not picking up our sword, our Bible. We're not doing the things that we normally do. So we become weak because we don't have the armor on. And what God is telling us today, he says, come back to me. The second step that we looked at today was Come closer to God, and God will come to feel close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, purify your heart, and your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Our loyalty is divided. We have to pick who we're going to be loyal to. Um, it's people that works at certain places. They, they can't, like uh, someone that works at Coke, they can't drink Pepsi. Someone that works at Pepsi, they can't drink Coke. So they have to have their loyalties together. Like, okay, so you you work at Coke, you, you can't drink Pepsi. Okay, you work at Pepsi, you, you can't drink Coke. So I heard, but this uh, this is something I heard. They say that if you drink Coke, you if you work at Pepsi, you drink Coke, you, you could be in trouble. So they have to pick their loyalties in the beginning. Okay, I'm getting a job at Pepsi. I'm all in Pepsi. I'm all in Coke. So they can't collide. You, you can't catch a person that works at Pepsi drinking Coke. That's what it said. I don't know if that's true. I had my sister tell me this the other day. But do you see the loyalty? Because this person works at Coke, they can no longer drink Pepsi. I, I will find that very hard because I don't really like Pepsi that much. I'm more of a Coke person if I had to pick. But I do like Mountain Dew. So there we go with that. You see what I'm saying? 
I couldn't work there because my loyalty to one company will always be tainted. So that's just like us in our relationship with Christ. We have to pick what we're going to do. Are we going to walk in the light and listen to God and let him purify our hands and heart? Are we going to dance with the devil and dance with our sins? I hate to say the devil because it makes it sound eerie, but it's the truth. We're dancing with our flesh. We're committed to the fleshly ways. But if you call your child yourself a child of God, the same commitment that you had on Saturday and Sunday nights, uh, Saturday nights and Friday nights to go to the club and get dressed up and find the best outfit. I never did this, but I'm just saying. Just like that commitment you have to do that or had to do that, that's the same commitment you need to give to God that I'm going to get up Friday night. I'm going to go to church or I'm going to get up Friday morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get up Saturday morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get up Sunday morning. I'm going to go to church. And just because you go to church doesn't make you a, a Christian. It's your heart. It's your heart. Our actions would never make us any closer to God. But our heart will. That's why it tells us here, it says, it says, purify your hearts. Purify your hearts. Because once our heart is purified, our loyalty won't be divided between God and the world. It, it, we will know what we want. So where is your loyalty at? Where is your, 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 your heart at? Where is your heart yearning for? Because when we start yearning for the things of the flesh, that's what we're going to mostly seek. But God is saying, come back to me. Come back to the prayer closet. Come back to, to reading your word. Come back to dwelling in my presence. Come back to knowing me. This world have closed every door. They can. They stop the prayers in the school system. They, 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 they have changed different laws to customize for different people and Okay, but we don't have to compromise our personal beliefs for nobody. We don't. The only thing we can do is stand on the word of God and say, this is what I stand on. The world can do what it wants, but I'm going to stand here and say, God is my God. God is my protector. God is my shepherd. God is my father. I'm going to walk in the light. My heart's going to be pure. My heart's going to be pointed in the right direction. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm not going to live a prayerless lifestyle. I'm going to pick God. I serve God. That's what we need today. But we have so many people compromising and turning their back. God. So do you have a contrite heart? Do you have a heart that's willing to and wanting to, to draw near to God? It's a song that I like. And um, I'm going to try to find it real quick. And I try not to play music on here because I don't want no one to say, you know, oh, she played a certain song, um, but this song here, I don't know this song, and but when I hear it, it it almost brings me to tears. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Draw me close to you. Yes. Never let me go. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I lay it all down. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the part where y'all hear. Right here. You are my desire. You're my desire. Yes, Lord. The way else will do. Yes, yes, yes. That song right there. 
He says, no one else would do. You're my desire. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to draw close to him. He wants us to never let him go. No matter what the world offers, that is not what we need. He wants us to know that he's what we need. He is what we rely on. It's not about how much Bible you read. It's not a much how, how long you pray. It's about how your heart feels when you do it. Do you yearn for his presence? Do you yearn to be near him? That's what it's all about. So today, if you slipped and you fell and you, you, you stop praying, you stop reading your word, go back to him. Because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to go back. And it's so easy to do. We just have to do it. We have to be in the right headspace to say, I don't want this world because what they give me is temporarily. And, they, and the world told me it's going to feel good, but it feels good only a moment. And when it leaves, when, when the feel good leaves, I feel ashamed. I feel broken still. I feel unloved. But in the presence of God, I have love. I have grace. I have mercy. I feel complete. So turn back to him. I hope you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to click that like, follow, subscribe button, whatever platform you're listening on. Thank you. Have a blessed night.